Okay, in this video, we're gonna cover an alternative roof construction detail to enable the insulation to be consistent across the whole ceiling. Okay, Mark, so what's the problem here? There's insulation here. Well, there is, John, but what's happened in the last 10 or more years is we're targeting these very high, efficient housing performance rates, you know, six star, seven star, eight star. So what's been introduced into the market in the last 10 years yes. are these really high ceiling bats, yep. R5, R6. So yep. they're going to be 240, 270 odd mils high. Yep. The problem is that you can't install this very high ceiling bat all the way across the ceiling yeah. because at some point in time this very high ceiling bat is going to stifle airflow into the roof cavity because it's going to be hard up against the underside of the roof. Yeah. Currently with the way that we build a truss roof we only really have about 100 mils above our top plate around the external wall to accommodate insulation. Yep. It won't fit a 200 wow. to 300 mil ceiling. Okay. So you can't do it, you yep. can't do it. Because there's yep. a standard that requires you to maintain airflow. You've got to maintain a 20 mil air space above the insulation, below the roof, so there's a natural airflow in your roof cavity. Yep. So what they've been doing is introducing what they call a perimeter bat. So you stop your great big bat, yep. back off the external wall, yep. and you're infilled to the external wall with a 70 or 90 mil bat. Yep. Now, if I just take this out for a moment, sure. this is an R2 or R2.5 bat. So one minute yeah. you've got R5, R6, yeah. and then you've got R2 around yeah, the perimeter. It's a bit of a hit, isn't it? And, and it's a big area. If you take the perimeter of your house, which yeah. is a lot of 100 lineal metres, could yeah. be, and you take that area, this is all substandard insulation. You are maintaining airflow. Yep. That's great, yep. but substandard insulation. Yep. When you put a perimeter bat in, you're meant to make up the insulation loss by increasing the height of this bat. That never made sense to me. Why would you put in a poor bat and increase the other bat? I, I don't think that doesn't really make sense to me. So there is something that makes sense to me is that we're building our roofs wrong. Yep. This here is not high enough. Correct. So what we need to do, yep. this is my thought, Yes is to basically lift the roof up yep. to allow our high performance bats to carry all the way across to our external walls. Wow. So we don't put any of these substandard bats in at all, of yep. course. So what we need to do is a little bit of a shimmy of this roof, you and I to move the roof along. Yep. And I'll show you what I think we need to do. So Mark, some homes do have an eave. That's right. and, and what usually happens here is this extends down and then you've got a lower eave. Eaves lining. So you'll bring the top plate, top cord of your truss through. Yep. Fascia way out here. Yep. Eaves lining back to the to the building frame. Yep. So, so, so the, the actual home looks a lot lower too, doesn't it? Well, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, and that was all efficiencies of reduced building height and construction yep. costs, I guess. Yep. Or again, they have been removing the eaves off buildings to cut the eaves back like I show on this <laughs> roof framing currently. Yeah, gotcha. right? so, okay, all right. But I mean, just to get the performance of the insulation, let's make the energy efficiency yes. of the building our paramount target. Absolutely. The important yep. part to us. All right. So let's just muck let's around Let's have a look at what framing. this solution is. Yeah. Yep. So if you jump on the other end, yes. let's see whether, if we can just slide this roof forward. Okay, so Mark, we've moved everything forward. That's right. This is the missing bit. So if we were to have a detail or a home without an eave, what would happen here? You would just cut off the roof framing. Yep. Plant your eaves on, or plant your fascia on, yep. with no eaves. Yep. But what we've done is we've moved the whole roof framing. So now the top cord springs off from the fascia, wow. which has now opened up the ceiling space above the external wall yep. to, we'll call it 300 mils. So wow. now we're accommodating yep an R5, R6 bat, we've still got our ventilation path yeah. underneath. We've done away with the substandard little perimeter Which is bat. a lot of effort to put in as well. That's right. Well, yeah. you've got to buy these bats, yeah. cut them in cut half, them in. install them around the perimeter. Yeah. So what we've now done is we've yeah. actually now created some roof construction that gives us a consistent R5, R6 high yeah. performance insulation across the entire ceiling. A higher looking home as well. It's a, it, it, the home gathers yeah. a little bit of height to it. Yes. And so, Mark, what this basically enables is the wall insulation to continue and wrap around that corner junction with no loss in R-value capacity. 
And it's not a tricky detail. I no. mean, it's simply just moving the roof framing forward. Yep. I'm calling this a heel, just so we structurally support the yeah. top cord directly above the load bearing wall. Yep. And it's as simple as that. And really, this is how it's done in, in America, North America, Canada, and Europe. Yeah. They do not sacrifice insulation no. when they're building their homes. Yep. The insulation is the priority, yep. and they adjust the framing of the home to accommodate the insulation.